I've been a blacksmith armorer for over 30 years. I've created weapons for over 200 feature films. This is Man at Arms. I purchased the toy from a toy shop just to kind of match up. I'm making a real weapon and it's proportional to a man's hand as opposed to a child's hand that the toy sword was made to, so uh, I scaled it up a bit. Thundercat's Sword of Omens was one of the most requested weapons from the fans. I had Alicia cut out the Thundercats emblem out of 18 gauge mild steel. I'm going to dome that afterwards to match the contour of the glass uh, gemstone. The grip consists of seven different elements that are stacked together like a palm tree. I use Duplo Lego type blocks to build a custom mold frame and then use room temperature rubber molding compound. I use the Duplo blocks because I can build a mold frame of whatever shape I want and it goes together relatively quickly. So we made one mold and we cast the seven pieces, sprue those or attach those to uh, like a wax tree and then I'll be pouring investment which is like plaster of Paris over the top. When I melt the wax out of there it'll leave a cavity and I'll be able to pour molten bronze into that cavity and it'll take on the shape of the original one that I made. I've cut out the 3 16 thick individual components for the hilt on the Sword of Omens and now we're adding the bevels and cleaning up the exterior of the bezel that holds the stone and the spike that comes off the front. The burnout oven, as the name implies, burns out the wax leaving a cavity. I heat up a molten bronze. Imagine a river of molten magma pouring over the top of this mold and that's what it is right now. Investment casting, as I call it, is also known as loss wax casting because when I do the wax model, the investment actually disappears when I'm finished with it. The mold actually breaks apart. It's only a one-time use. The groove down the center of the blade is called a fuller. So I heated up the blade in the forge, brought it over to the fly press, and squeezed in a fuller. People used to call it a blood groove. The myth is that if you stick it in the body with a fuller or blood groove in it, it releases the vacuum so you can pull your sword out of the body. It's not that at all. The fuller lightens the blade and adds more rigidity for strength on the blade. After I had uh, fullered the blade using the fly press, I took it to a turbine belt grinder so I could grind the fullers. After that was done, I went back over to my regular belt grinder and ground the hollow grinds with a 10 inch contact wheel. After I got the initial bevels on the belt grinder, I put all the pieces together to see how it looked and uh, I'm pretty happy with how it's coming together. Now I'm cutting the Eye of Thundara from a block of red glass. I use a water-cooled diamond core drill. I took it to progressively finer wheels and domed it and polished it up on the felt pad on the other side of the lavatory equipment. I took the Thundercats emblem and then domed that into the contour on the red glass stone. After completing the gemstone and drilling the hole through it, we've soldered a Chicago screw onto the back of the Thundercats emblem and there will be a screw going through both sides of the sword hilt that holds everything together. The blade is now ground and ready for hardening in the heat treating oven. been refining all the edges on the components for the hilt and we start TIG welding them together, make it a homogenous piece before we weld that part onto the sword blade. This sword is a super elaborate build. There's probably over 50 or 60 components on it. Individual stones, little fittings on the hilt, the different segments on the grip and pommel. It's been a lot of work putting it together, but I'm really pleased with the final outcome. All the pieces are together, and Thundercat's Sword of Omens is complete.
Step aside, Lionel. Let a real king take a swing. Thanks for watching Man at Arms. Be sure to subscribe. Tell me in the comments what weapon you'd like to see next.